Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. I've got two stories to share with you in this very latest Moon Lambo hot, 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 hot jam. Starting with the one that's on your screen here, which, by the way, is an update on a story that I covered just the other day, because uh, in case you hadn't heard, the SEC continues to attack, attack the entire crypto space. Uh, I'm just thankful that, at least as far as it pertains to the XRP community, we, the XRP holders, are the only ones that are 100% in the clear this market cycle. Now, I don't think that Bitcoin's going to get attacked, but even Bitcoin uh, doesn't have the same level of legal clarity that XRP does. Uh, so we're safe here, but anyway, here's the headline. Ripple CLO Stuart Alderati challenges SEC OpenSea NFT Wells notice, citing 1976 art gallery ruling. So <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh as I was reading through this and, and seeing Stuart Alderati's perspective. Because it's very crystal clear evidence that the SEC is going against its own view and ruling from the past. Unquestionably, this is the case. And this is damaging for them. And it's it was found by Ripple's chief legal officer. So you'll love to see it. Ripple continues to come in clutch for the entire crypto space. So OpenSea, uh, you are welcome. Um, then we also have this. Pundit says Trump presidency not needed for XRP to rise. Now, that's an interesting topic. Do you think it matters uh, who wins the presidency in the United States uh, you know, in terms of price action for XRP? Or really, you could even argue, uh, argue discuss uh, for the entire crypto space. Got a couple thoughts, and I'll be curious to hear what you guys think in the comment section below. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so let's get you caught up to speed here in case you missed it. A little table setting here. Uh, Daily Huddle piece reads as follows. The chief legal officer of the crypto firm Ripple is publicly issuing a challenge to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Yesterday, the CEO of the world's largest NFT marketplace, Devin Fenzer of OpenSea, announced that the SEC had slapped OpenSea with a Wells Notice. A Wells Notice is a warning issued by the SEC that they are planning to pursue legal action against a company and is not an indication of wrongdoing. And so here's part of what Fenzer said. Quote, OpenSea has received a Wells Notice from the SEC threatening to sue us because they believe NFTs on our platform are securities. We're shocked the SEC would make such a sweeping move against creators and artists. But we're ready to stand up and fight. And so just pause to note here, OpenSea is a platform where you can buy and sell NFTs and also uh, launch them. You can create them, right? And so that's, that's an attack on the entire ecosystem, obviously, right? And then the rest of his quote is as follows. Cryptocurrencies have long been in the crosshairs of the SEC, and companies like Coinbase, Uniswap, Robinhood, Kraken, and Consensus have been fighting against the SEC's single-track approach of regulation by enforcement. But this is a move into uncharted territory. By targeting NFTs, the SEC would stifle innovation on an even broader scale. Hundreds of thousands of online artists and creatives are at risk, and many do not have the resources to defend themselves, end quote. NFTs are viewed by many as the next wave in artistic intellectual property ownership, and according to Ripple CLO Stuart Alderati, the SEC ruled that art galleries did not have to register with the SEC nearly 50 years ago. And so this is where I'll bring up his actual post. And so you can kind of think of it in ways, there's a tremendous overlap in terms of similarity. Yes, uh, we're dealing with, you know, technology here to, to a different degree than an art gallery, but conceptually, it's pretty much the same damn thing. Because you can think of what OpenSea is doing, they're connecting uh, buyers and sellers and creators, right? Yes, that, well, that's the same thing that happened in 1976 with this art gallery. And the SEC was okay with what the art gallery is doing. Now, it shouldn't be surprising because there was no war to fight there. And obviously, why shouldn't you be able to, to, to conduct the, facilitate transactions with, these, with art here? Of course, it's, it's very obvious. The very notion that, um, you know, Pokemon cards or anything like that would in and of themselves be securities, that's just absurd. And it can be art piece too, it doesn't matter. You know, the thing in and of itself that just, by the nature of existing, it doesn't just become a security. Now, of course, you can package things in certain ways that it would be uh, equivalent to that. 
But there's very clear precedent here, which is what Stuart Alderati is, hi uh, is highlighting. And this is hilarious to me. It could not be more obvious. Like, I'd love to see this slapped, uh, this, this, this document slapped right in front of the judge and be like, explain. <laughs> Come on, you have to know. Like, you've got to know. This can't go well in court for them, right? And so Stuart Alderati wrote the following. Fun fact. In 1976, the SEC ruled that art galleries, even when promoting and selling to buyers that had investment motives, didn't need to register with the SEC. <gasps> How about that? They didn't need to register, and here's a document saying uh, just as much. They literally didn't need to. And so I'll share with you just a little bit of this here. Um, so it reads as follows. Uh, this is in response to your letter of August 19th, 1976, concerning the proposed offer and sale of packages of lithographs by your client, Art Appraisers of America, LTD, without compliance with the registration requirements of the Securities Act of 1933. We understand the material facts to be as follows. The gallery serves as an agent for an artist by the name of William Nelson, the artist, who intends to produce a series of 500 numbered and signed lithographs of each up to 30 works of art he expects to create, so a total of 15,000 lithographs. The lithographs will be sold by the gallery, which, open, which will compensate the artist directly for his services rendered in connection with the production of the lithographs. So th think about this. So you have an artist, and, and you have the gallery, and so OpenSea would be like the gallery, and the artist would be like the NFT creator. It's the same damn thing conceptually, obviously. And I don't want to read the whole thing. It's on your screen if you want to pause and read it. But they wanted to cite the rest of the specifics. So all that's happening here is we're using technology to do the same damn thing that was perfectly legal, even according to the SEC in 1976. It's just a new, it's a new, newfangled way of doing things with the Webernets. Just we, we, so it's bad because the technology facilitates the, the transactions and such and connects people. Like what? It doesn't make any damn sense. And so they wrote here at the bottom, based upon the information in your letter, this division will not recommend any enforcement action to the commission if the packages of lithographs are sold as proposed without compliance with the registration requirements of the act in reliance upon your opinion as counsel that the packages are not securities within the meaning of Section 2.1 of the Act. And so that's a fancy way of saying, yeah, you're fine. Go ahead and do what you want to do. You're, you're not breaking securities law. You're, you're fine. Of course, and it's materially the same thing. So this is so frustrating. It's completely absurd that we even have to talk about this here. So I'm glad he found... This is a good find by Stuart Alder right here. But you see how absurd this is? Like, <sighs> freaking stupid as hell. And when this is all said and done, like, people are going to look back on this a decade from now and just be like, how is this a real thing the SEC was doing? And they'll have the same thoughts, perhaps even more so, with what happened in the SEC v. Ripple lawsuit. I mean, that, that's more absurd, arguably. But what about the future? Do these elections here in the good old United States, are they, are they going to... Do, do they have to go a certain way for XRP or really any cryptocurrency to moon so we can have Lambo? Fair question. Headline here from the Crypto Basic, Pundit says Trump presidency not needed for XRP to rise. Now, it's very clear that, and look, I don't like this, that crypto should not be partisan. Politicians made it partisan. Uh, I don't like that. I don't think it always will be because obviously we're on the right side of history and it's just going to keep getting adopted. Um, but it is the case that at this point, honestly, for all intents and purposes, being pro-crypto, it's basically a Republican Party platform. It basically is. Like, everybody's... Buying. If you look at the voting records with anything crypto, almost 100%, or in many cases when there's a vote on something uh, crypto-related, sometimes 100%, that particular party is like, yeah, of course, go for it. Protecting it. It's the opposite on the other side with the Democrats. It just is. And that's stupid. It shouldn't be partisan. So I always uh, applaud the... the um, the the uh, the Democrats who go against the grain and challenge their own party on that and those those uh, those Democrats are absolutely to be encouraged applauded uh, I certainly admire that they're doing that because sometimes it can be very difficult to go against the grain like that there are re repercussions within your own party sometimes and so I always applaud them when they do that they deserve that recognition certainly here but still the question becomes you know once once November rolls around the election occurs what if you have an administration that's not pro crypto a continuation. I mean, it would be at least a continuation, but who knows? They could even step things up. It's very clear. Like, we're seeing what the SEC is doing right now with the current administration. 
I just showed you the open sea attack. I mean, it's a Wells notice, but you know they're going to sue him, right? That's that's like a virtual certainty. So what's actually going to happen? So some people think that you have to, in order to see these pumps, that you actually would have to see Trump elected. And I don't believe that. I actually don't. Now, I don't want to see somebody in charge who is not pro-crypto. But is this needed to have a bull run? No, I don't think so. In fact, I would say this, and this is just my opinion. You're, you're welcome to disagree. That's fine. But when it comes to even the the um, you know the performance of, of the stock market, you like I've seen it argued each way. But the truth of the matter is like, for, take it for what it's worth. But from what I've seen, having looked into this in the past, like even if you're talking about the stock market, it just trends up regardless of who's in charge. Now that doesn't mean there aren't real world negatives in the world of businesses or that, depending on who's in charge. I'm not saying that. But if you just look in terms of, uh, is it climbing under this president or that president? People keep going. You know what the the stock market hates more than anything is the uncertainty. And so I think that is why you see markets kind of open up historically in election years after they know who, who, who wins the presidency. So even if the market views it as a negative, typically there will be a rebound and then uh, market participants are like, okay, well, we have more of an idea of what we can probably expect, and then people go with their lives. And I think that in that sense, it would be the same here, even in the world of crypto. But if you have an administration uh, in charge that's anti-crypto, you're going to prevent over a prolonged period of time throughout the administration, more money and innovation and entrepreneurship flowing in in the United States. That will happen. So, but it, it, is, it doesn't mean we can't have bull runs. No, I, I don't believe that for a second. But would it, especially if you have a, an administration like that and it's followed by another one and another one and another one, if you don't get one that's pro-crypto at some point, you're not going to get this whole thing cleaned up. So that will have real-world ramifications, and I think a lot of the entrepreneurship would just go elsewhere in the world to, for development. And that is what we've been seeing, you know, leaving the United States in droves, that, for sure, for sure. So even that stuff would still happen. It's just it would be stagnant here where I live in the United States. But so, so that part, I certainly acknowledge if you're thinking, no, it'd be bad if we don't get somebody's program. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I understand that. Totally with you. We all understand that. I'm just saying if you're talking specifically about can we still have a bull run regardless? It, like if Harris wins, can, can we have a bull? Yeah. Why couldn't we? Because there, there are other factors. I mean, even if the market doesn't initially find that as a positive, and I don't know, maybe that's the case. Like the amount of liquidity that's opening up, my God, I talk about that a lot in videos where I'm talking about what's happening in markets. It clearly, it seems like it's, it's clearly heading in that direction. So, well, I mean, we'll find out for sure together, but I'm just saying I personally don't have any sort of a fear on that specific point either way. Now, if you're talking big picture in terms of entrepreneurship being uh, squelched and all that stuff, yeah, totally got it. And I, you just, I, I cannot be, I, I just, I cannot vote for somebody that's anti-crypto. It's just not happening. It, it's, I'm not doing it. I, I'm not, it's, and, and I'm not a one issue voter. But I, I am saying, like, it, there would have to be something extreme in the other direction for me to be like, come on. <laughs> you know, like, it's just... Because it, it, to me, it is something that is among the most important things. I mean, we're talking about our financial well-being here. And, and there's this opportunity for life-changing wealth, and there's one party that wants you to have that, and there's one that doesn't. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say. Right? That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.